Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Face in My Fear of Action presentation, Jesus discusses how we create fears in order to avoid action, the importance of learning to act even though we are afraid never using our fear as an excuse to become unloving and refusing to revert to inactivity on the issue of learning and growing in love. Recorded on the 23rd of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. All right, so the topic of this uh, discussion now that we're in is, is facing my fear of action. But before I proceed on the subject of action itself, I would like to say a little bit more about fear, if I could. Did you realise that there are a lot of things that God has never created in the universe? And fear is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So fear is a human creation. And anything that we personally create as humans, God expects us to also eventually destroy or get rid of, eradicate. So interestingly, God's providing a whole heap of things around us to eradicate fear, while at the same time we ourselves wish to hold on to it. Now you can see already the pattern from our previous discussions, right? Is that we wish to hold on to fear because we wish to use fear then as a justification for not taking action, for not changing. So, so fear becomes an excuse. Now that's not saying that you don't have emotional fears inside of you, because you do. In your childhood there are many events that occurred that you were afraid of happening again. And as a result, um, fear was, uh, usually through poor treatment of you, fear was created right, within you. But you weren't allowed to release it. That's the problem. You weren't allowed to let it flow through you and release it. You were forced into storing it. And there's a whole lot of reasons why our parents hate us expressing fear when we're children. <coughs> Because then, of course, it connects them to their own fears and that, that becomes very, very difficult for them to maintain their, uh, the lid on their own fears. And as children, uh, we have a tendency, because we're, we're doing things to, with less control, we have a tendency to trigger our parents' fears all the time. Right? You notice that? With the little kids in particular? Parents are afraid of running across the road, so what does the child do? Straight across the road. <coughs> Parents are afraid of the next door neighbour finding out the truth. What does the child do? <laughs> Tells the next door neighbour the truth. <laughs> you know. so, so, so what happens is that the child learns a relationship between speaking, untr speaking truth and, and emotional withdrawal of love. And the emotional withdrawal of love obviously is a very huge event for any person, but it's a big event for a child. And as a result, the child ends up associating a whole slew of actions that it may take with the prevention or the, or the withdrawal of love. So if I tell the truth, I'll get love withdrawn. That's a big association that happens as early in our childhood. If I tell the truth, love will be withdrawn. So there's not many parents that go, isn't it fantastic my child was so truthful <laughs> with my neighbour? You know? It's more like, what, is it, what does the parent normally do? React very violently, oftentimes angrily, and some frequently, unfortunately, physically violent towards a child who expresses the truth when that parent's personal emotional condition or personal feelings would be exposed. So as a, as a result, we become very afraid of taking action. 
And in fact, the majority of us, by the time we've become adult, we've learned that actually taking actions is fraught with danger. And unless you're absolutely certain of the action that you're going to take, you must not take it. And then, of course, the law of attraction is also trying to expose that emotion. So every time we do take, an, do take an action, often there is an angry response or a negative response triggering to trigger an emotion. But we see that as proof, proof that we've got to be very, very careful about taking any actions. Now, what are the only actions that God feels are actions you shouldn't take? You can yell it out. <laughs> or, or unloving or untruthful. <laughs> Remember that the two are joined at the hip, Siamese twins. <laughs> right. So, unloving or untruthful. And, and this is where I see many of you making some big mistakes. You, you're not including untruthful, right? <laughs> it's a bit, a bit of a problem. So untruthful, unloving or untruthful actions are the only mistakes. Mistakes. Now, can you see if you really believed that, you'd probably be doing a whole lot more with your life. Uh, but the problem is, we don't really believe it, do we? Because from our childhood, we've been, it's been told to us over and over again, is that almost anything that's out of harmony with what another person feels is good is a mistake. And the trouble is, you've got to assess everybody in your environment so for most people, they know 100 people, so they have to assess 100 people's response to their potential action. And then nowadays with the internet, and you're on Facebook and whatever else, now you've got to assess thousands of people's response to your action. Right? And if it looks like any one of those people might be upset, don't do it. Right? Just talk about it. But don't do it. You're allowed to talk about actions till you're blue in the face. As long as you don't do them, you usually can get away with that. Because then everyone has a big talk about it. No, I don't agree. Yes, I agree. A big fight about it. You know, there's pages and pages and pages written on the internet about it and so forth. And, and that's with you just talking about it, let alone actually doing it. Right. So we're, we're petrified of action. Like we have terror about it, literally terror about it. The amount of violence that's been perpetrated towards us in the past for taking an action that turned out to be a mistake is so large that most people on this planet are terrified to really do anything that won't be generally accepted by the majority of people. That's our problem. Now the problem is, what's the majority of people, where are they again? What, what, where's the earth? In the hells. But, but where is it in terms of love? They all have the same opinion of love, pretty much, don't they? Now if we're going to be educated in love, we need a higher source of love. Well, that's going to mean being outside of the box when it comes to how everybody else thinks. And so what's that going to mean? We're probably going to take actions that are going to be completely different than the average person's actions and how is that going to be perceived by the average person? Uh, well, not only is crazy, but something that they must prevent with all of their might even. So you, you could have come under attack. You could come under violent abuse even by taking actions that are out of harmony with the average person's actions on the planet. <coughs> is that not true? Yep. Have you ever done it? And you, you, you can measure it. It's quite easy. 
You just, you just have to do one thing out of harmony with the average person's actions. Even if it was in harmony with love and truth, all of a sudden everybody's responding completely differently to you, right? Yeah. So, Laura. Um, a big one for me um, is if I'm with other people, um, I can either feel uncomfortable or it's got to do either with me being a facade or spirits, these kind of things. And I don't want to say all of that because they don't even will know what I'm talking about. So I just say I've got to leave. But I, oh, I'm wondering now if me just saying I want to leave gets me away from being truthful about how I really feel. Yeah. And but why don't, why don't you say the truth, you, that you feel like you're being attacked? No, I just feel like they're, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't you feel like... Mm. like like again, if, if, if somebody was really open and they're saying, what are you talking about, Laura? You'd be fine, right? It's like, it's when they go, what in the hell are you talking about, Laura? Now you feel not fine, right? I just mean people in the street, like I wouldn't say, oh, I'm, I'm not being myself because I can feel spirits or I can feel, I've, you know, I don't feel like I can say those words to people because I don't feel like they're going to care about all that so me just saying i've got to go is just the nice yeah but i i also feel with yourself laura that y you know a lot of what you're saying is also not true you're just you're just feeling what you're feeling feelings from those people that you just don't want to feel and so you want to get away and that's you blame true. spirits for what you're just feeling that's true and i don't know how how to s so if i was l being completely truthful i would just say that that exactly thing yeah you say I, I feel like you're being angry with me right now and i need to get going or why are you angry with me see if 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 a person's anger with you didn't cause you to have a low worth you'd probably ask them why they're angry so yeah so a big justification is i don't have to say i just have to say i'm going i'm going that's all I know yeah it helps say. prevent a lot of emotion right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so this, this is our problem, you see, we, we, we justify a lot of different behaviours because we basically are just trying to prevent some emotion. And, and, and we say, we, we even think that telling the truth sometimes is actually telling the truth when we're not telling the truth, we're just trying to not feel some emotion. Right? And you do that frequently where you're telling another person a truth, but the reality is it's not a truth. It's just, the truth is you just feel confronted in the situation emotionally and you don't want to feel it, so you want to run away. So that's what. So you tell them something that will let you get away with, with it. Yeah. yeah. It's not the best way to handle the situation, though, of course. Barbara? Um, taking action at a physical level and at an emotional level, mm -hmm. will our responses be the same? Like if we've got avoidances on the... Well, the, the reality is that you can take action on a physical level while at the same time attempting to suppress your emotion. Right? So that's not going to do you much good, is it? But also many of you avoid taking positive action on something that's loving and truthful because you're trying to avoid an emotion. So, so it works both ways, you follow? So it, it's, it, a lot of it is about avoiding negative emotion from others, right, in either direction, right? And, and avoiding feeling that emotion from, from, from others inside of self. Well, how does it make you feel? So, so many of you avoid loving actions for the same reason that you, have, that you engage unloving actions. Right? For the same reason, which is to avoid a whole heap of emotion. Avoid, avoid attack or avoid being ridiculed or avoid being made fun of, or avoid not being approved of and so forth and so forth. And many of you do it because you, you get your addictions met. So you do something which is actually unloving or untruthful because you get an addiction met. So you go up to someone and say, you look so nice in the dress and behind the thing you're going, you look terrible today. Right, <laughs> but you do it because you think you know you think that this polite facade 
is actually the way to get along in the world, which is actually, you know, the problem with facade is you're lying all the time. Right? You know how we talked in the 2014 assistance groups about facade, and we will be talking about them in this series, but it will be in the next presentation we do, not in this, in this presentation. But the problem with the facade is you are lying all the time. So there's not much desire for truth there. You're lying all the time. The problem with addiction is you want a barter system all the time. Now that bartering system, as we pointed out, is not love, but as soon as you want your addictions met, you want a bartering system all the time. So you want to lie all the time and have a bartering system all the time. And then you say, I'm trying to practice God's way. No, let's get honest about it. You're practicing your way. Right? And these are all parts of how you act, how you choose to act. So, so why do you want your addictions met? Because when you don't get them met, what will happen? You will have to feel some emotion. Right? That's why you want them met. Why, why do you want to have a facade? Because if you don't have a facade, what's going to happen? People will see your real you, right? And they might not like it. And then what will happen? Your worth being associated with that gets pulled down. And so, so now you feel you're not worth anything when they pull you down. So what do you decide to do instead? Present the facade. It's a decision based on your will that you're making in those, loca in those places. You're choosing to be afraid of loving action. That's what you're choosing to do. Sheridan? <clears throat> so I've somehow convinced myself that like I'm in this hypervigilant state I almost feel. And so I kind of have convinced myself like that I will be attacked if I go outside even. But I still go outside, but I just feel like I can't trust anyone around me. I'm just in this constant state. I'm hearing thoughts like you're going to be attacked, you're going to be raped, like this is just trying to walk to the shop. Mm -hmm. and it's pretty full on. Mm -hmm. So in that space, I'm just not telling myself truth or like as often you know my heart's pounding just all like in that state of hyper vigilance and so every time you've felt that you've been raped haven't you oh shit really well <laughs> <laughs> you would know <laughs> i'm asking you a question um, every time you've felt that you'd be raped you've finished up being raped is that how I feel? No, no I'm asking I, I, if that's really I, what happened. <laughs> no, no, that's not. No, how many times have you been raped when you felt you were going to be? Never. Yeah, interesting that. Why is that? I, I don't know what's going on there. Well, you, you're either believing what's getting told to you or you have this feeling in you that it will happen at some point. Well, I feel like I have both. Well, yeah, I'm saying you do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but... But you're listening to it because yes. you want to. Why do you want to? Well, I feel like it's possibly some women who want to control me. And they're telling me that I, d I don't know, that's, that's what I've come up with. Yeah, I agree. But, but why do you want to listen to them? Because I'm terrified of them. Of them, yeah. Why? Why are you terrified of them? So, so they're trying to make you terrified of a man well, and you're yes. actually terrified of who? Yeah, the women. This the is, women, yeah. you terrified. what I try yeah. and tell myself. Yeah, you're terrified this. of the women and you haven't processed that. Yes. Right? So, so, and you're not going to process it while you're afraid of getting raped because that's terror of a man, right? Yes. Yep. And they know that. Yeah. Right, okay. So, so, so they, you need to process some terror of a woman. Yes. Yep. Right? Yep. They're feeding you all this crap because mm -hmm. they want you to be terrified of them. Why is that? Because then I'll get really angry at men. Yes, you will. And lo and behold, what happens? I get really angry. You get really with angry. My men. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You do. Cause yeah. I, and one, yeah, because I, I. So you become their mouthpiece towards a man who's a really nice man, actually. Yes. Mm. And like only probably 
I haven't challenged it very much, but one night I did. Yeah, and? It, like it was just horrible. Like yeah, just and fully, that's what you're avoiding. Yeah. You're avoiding feeling horrible for a while and instead you try to make your man feel horrible. Yeah. That's because what that's what gives these women what they want. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you're afraid of acting because? I'm terrified of women. No, you're going to be, ter you're terrified of women attacking you. Yeah. You're more terrified of women attacking you than you are of men attacking you, in fact, because you're willing to attack a man. Yes. And you're not afraid of him attacking you back. Mm. So I just, I haven't told my, I don't know the truth yet, like you're telling. Yeah. I've I'm avoided knowing the truth about that, really, or feeling it. Yeah, you definitely have. You definitely have. You, you don't want to see this is all about your mum. Yes. You'd rather see that it's all about some abstract problem with men. Yeah. Yep. And it's not. Yeah. It's all about your terror of your mother. Yeah. So, so you're afraid to take action because you're afraid you'll get attacked by women. Yep. Now, lots of you women are in this state. Mm. We're just terrified of how other women will treat you. And so what you do is you treat men like crap in order to get the approval of the other women. Mm. All right? Because I, I feel like I've tried to tell... Just even this morning, I was like, wow, cause I felt angry how someone was treating their son. And I was like, oh, I'm angry with my mum. <laughs> like, and then, but somehow I don't... But, but you treat that. somebody's son that way all day. Yes, I do. And th that was the other thing I realised. So aren't there per isn't the person just reflecting it towards you, what you don't want to feel about yourself? Yes. Isn't that why you're getting angry? Yep. Because you don't want to feel that you're the same as that, mo that mother. Yes. It seems so easy now <laughs> we're talking about it. It does. You, can you see how easy it is when we're open to the discussion? But when we're not open to the discussion, we can't even think this way. Like, it's so easy to see what's really causing most problems, right? right? It is. But the majority of us not allowing it to be because we don't want to know. Most of the time you get upset about another person's behaviour because of what they're reflecting back at you. That's the reality most of the time. They're reflecting something about you that you've noticed in you that you don't want to see, more and more specifically that you don't want to feel. Feel. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. So, so this, d this deep levels of fear, so, so what I see many of you, many of you are like uh, tools of the spirits that surround you. You, you, have, you have a fear-based relationship with the spirits that surround you and so you become their tool to engage a whole heap of behaviour towards others that they want you to engage because you're more afraid of what they will do to you than you are afraid of anything else. <coughs> mm. Just like your case, Sherry. Yep. You, let's have the mic back for Sherry. Thanks, Carmel. <coughs> so the the fear isn't just of like my mother. There's a now there's a fear of the women spirits as well. Well, of course, of course, because any time you're afraid of your mother, you're going to attract women spirits who are much like your mother, who are going to be around you all the time as well, because they get off on having control of their daughter, right? Or as or a daughter substitute, they get they get. Their, fear, their addictions met. What's their addictions? Well, their addictions are they want power over other women, right? It's probably a, in their childhood they didn't have any power over anybody and they want some power over somebody and they want power over other women. And in particular, in your case, they want power over another woman so that they can influence that other woman to attack men. Right? So poor Steve, he's, he's like their, he's their goal. Their goal is to destroy him. Right? And their goal is to use you to do it. And your willingness to do it is about your fear of them. Yeah. You follow? Yep. Because I've seen that on him. Like, just looking at him, I'm just like... Yeah. I can see you're just being hammered right now. Like. He is, yeah. He's getting hammered all the time. His problem is that he lacks love of himself too much to allow it, and he allows it to continue. Yeah. See, if he really loved himself, he would have been gone years ago. Since the last assistance group, I've actually moved out right. of the house be yep. because I felt like I 
wasn't dealing with it and yeah. then just said that way. But can you see how even that is a manipulation of these spirits to get you guys to not resolve the actual problem? They've convinced you that you can't resolve the problem, right? And all they've done now is separated the two of you, right? And so he still feels sad, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Of yeah. course, because he loves you and he wants to be with you. So he still feels sad. So at the end of the day, they still get to punish him through your leaving. Wouldn't it be better to address the fear with them? Yes. Yeah. And then, then of course, you would have, be able to have a relationship that's not based on this attack all the time. Right? He needs to also learn to stand up for himself, obviously, but that's a, that's a different equation. He's not here to discuss that, and, the, and I'll yeah. discuss it when we have an opportunity. But and I've, t I've talked to him about that already. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the reality is you've got this stuff going on, and, and, and your, fe your real fear is taking action with these spirits. Right now, by the way, Laura, this applies to you as well. So, if I can just, I just I just had a thought across my mind to say that. Um, but but it applies to many of you ladies with how you treat yourself, Mel. Same thing. Um, so it applies to many of you ladies where you've been have a history of of distancing yourself or attacking males, right? Or you have a history of uh, attacking other people, women, other women, because you're afraid of some spirits with you. And, and what you need to do is work through that fear first, uh, take action on that fear. What you do is you take action on anything else and they'll let you take action on anything else other than that. And when you take action on that, as you pointed out, it's going to be terrible for, for a period of time for you because you're going to get hammered by them. All the hammering you've done to others, you're going to get from them. Yes, the, from listening to other personal truths. Like somehow in this... I'd convinced myself that um, through my life I've been a victim. Mm -hmm. And then listening to some of the recent, I was like, uh uh, I'm the perpetrator. Like, You're a perpetrator because you honour fear above anything else. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. And this is the problem that majority of people have fear becomes their God. Mm. Right. So, so let's look at what you tell yourself when you're afraid. Right. What, what do you tell yourself when you're afraid? What was, if we ask everybody, what, what do you tell yourself when you're afraid? Um, let's go to Pete and then across to Pamela. I have to protect myself. Yeah, it's even worse than that though. We, we tell ourselves we have to protect ourselves but we're actually saying to ourselves that I can only be happy if I act how my fear dictates. Does everyone get that? That's what you're telling yourself. Telling yourself that the only way... I'm, like, what's this crap about truth and love and all this crap, right? The reality is inside of yourself. You don't believe any of that crap. What you really believe is that if your fear tells you to do something, you do it quick smart because that's the only way you're going to be happy. To avoid fear is the only course to happiness is what you tell yourself. Now to me, fear is just an emotion that I have to feel and it's also an emotion that's out of harmony with God's love and truth so it's definitely something I need to feel rather than act upon. But to you, it's something that you don't want to feel and you'd rather act upon it. You see the difference? All right? So you, you, you're basically saying that your happiness is dependent upon you doing whatever the fear tells you to do. Right? Just in that, in that place too, there doesn't even feel like there's another option. Correct. This is the problem with fear, is that fear, like I keep saying to you, fear becomes the, I can only be happy if I um, believe fear is my God. And, and it's worse than just a belief. 
because it, it really is if I use fear as my God. <laughs> if we go up to Fab, up the back. Pam? Um, I often tell myself that, and it's an association with an old terror, which I don't think, well, I haven't felt yet, terror I experienced when I was a child of being taken by the spirits. Well, you know, the reality is everybody has. Yeah. <laughs> at some point probably been been uh, in a, in their childhood been influenced or or had interactions with spirits so is that the real problem isn't the real problem i think it's probably because i don't have trust of myself no, so, so now you're guessing no. well what's the feeling you have you're terrified of people who you can't see influencing your life is that not true? Yes. Okay. So, so feel it. Terror is just an emotion. Right? You, all you need to do is feel it. Stop acting in harmony with it. Mm. Just feel it. You're terrified of people you can't see influencing you. People you can't see influencing you all the time. Even right now they're influencing you. Right? And this is the problem. As soon as you're terrified of it and don't release the emotion, you attract it anyway, so it's going to get worse until you deal with the emotion. You're better off dealing with the emotion. So we finish up telling ourselves, if I deal with the emotion, I'll be unhappy. And I'm telling you, no, if you deal with the emotion, you'll get happy. Right? And you go, no, that's not true. If I deal with the emotion, I'll be unhappy. So, so you want to hold on to the belief that you're going to be unhappy doing the right thing. So you're basically telling yourself doing the right thing results in pain and suffering and doing the wrong thing results in happiness. That's what you're telling yourself. And then you wonder why you have pain and suffering. It's because you're doing the wrong thing that you get that pain and suffering results, right? Yeah. Um, I recently, I've been aware of thoughts being dropped into me, dark mm -hmm. thoughts, mm -hmm. and I've immediately wanted to block them. But just recently <coughs> I've gone, no, I'm actually going to allow myself to think these thoughts without any fear. Yeah. But it's taken me... A no, lot but of see, that's not courage. feeling an emotion. That's controlling it still, Pam. Okay. You're, you're really good at this. You, you, you use all these intellectual mind games to control the process. Yeah. You're terrified of these thoughts. You're terrified of the spirits with them. You'd be better off feeling them then you would be playing these mind games. Okay. Because these mind games don't get you anywhere. Make sense? Yes. Yep. And we were over at FAP. Um, I, I look at that there and it's like, well, you know, as you know, over a year ago I had my fear peak to its point that I thought I couldn't deal with it and yep. I buckled completely. Yep. But it felt worse after. Like, it's not like it felt good. Of course it will. There's and more pain and suffering. Yeah, and, and it's like, and it created so much more pain after. And now it's harder to undo. Yeah, and as it's well. like, yeah, and it's like, and it's not only that, it's not, it's also what I created in that place too. Like, when I resisted all that fear and I acted unlovingly, I created pain, not pain, but I just created a mess everywhere. Yeah, you also break relationships. There's all sorts of things that happen in that moment yeah. where you're on a fear first. Every, there's so many things that happen that are negative to your life and then there's all this pain and suffering afterwards and then you go, well, hang on a sec, uh, I still feel I'll be happy at the end of it. In the moment, that's what you feel, yeah. that you'll be happier at the end of it, but it never works out that way, Fab, no, ever. And, and, I, and I notice that it doesn't it work out that way and mm. then now so I go, okay, I'm going to act in... A lot, a lot of my life is acting, when I feel fear coming up, I act in a way that I can sort of yep. get past it. Yep. But every single time, nearly lately, I get completely attacked. So yep. That's what you're avoiding before, it, right? Yeah. And so now it's just like, now I just got to learn to deal, learn to feel what it feels like to be attacked. You do? And grieve the attack? Because after a while, you won't even notice being attacked. Yeah, and I struggle with that, like mm -hmm. with the feeling that grief i think more than because I'm, I'm i don't have much fear of taking the action anymore i just have a real big fear of the results you know, yeah the, yep. the emotion i think the attack yeah how it feels when you get attacked yeah like the but see that that is a link between your worth and other people's opinions 
Completely, yeah. Right? Yeah. And once you, once, you work your way, once you break the link between your worth and other people's opinions, you will no longer think that just because another person has an opinion of you that's negative, it doesn't mean you're not worth anything. Yeah, I still have everything linked to, to that. Yeah. yeah. So you're still basically... So you know how before we were talking about the link that many of you have between worth and truth? Well, many of you also have a, a link between worth and attack. Right? Once you break the link between worth and attack, you, you'll realise that anybody who attacks you doesn't love you. And, and whether they attack you or not, it's, it's all them. You know? It's got nothing to do with you unless you've been out of harmony with love, love and truth. Yeah. But even if you've been out of harmony with love and truth, a person who loves doesn't attack you. No, so the like every time you've been out of harmony with love and truth with me, I don't attack you. No. I just talk to you about what's happening. Yeah. But I don't attack you or berate you or make your life miserable or, you know, try to punish you for the rest of your existence or anything. Well, that's what's happening, though, like with everyone else that I try to be. That's right, and that's what you're afraid of. That's yeah. what needs to be broken down is this linkage between your worth and the attack itself, yeah. you see? Can you see how... Um, it's something I, I need to probably do as a bit of an aside... Um, because I still haven't talked about action very much here, but uh, um, because we're, we're sort of getting a little digressed from what I really want to talk to you about. But, but it is important to understand that, that there are linkages between worth and many of the things that you are concerned about, right? And, and because the linkage exists, this linkage between worth and other people's opinions, for example, because these linkages exist, it causes you to choose to not act, right, in harmony with love, right? Whereas if the linkage didn't exist, not only would you act in harmony with love, but you would also not feel anything as a result of the attack. So you wouldn't feel even the attack? You don't, need, like, they might be attacking you, but to you it's like, you don't, you, it doesn't even bother you at all. You follow? Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought it was related to the fear of action as well. Like, can you see that if you felt from God that you had worth, that there would be no link between any other thing and worth? And it, wouldn't that be such a freeing place? Because you could take action in harmony with love and truth, without ever con contemplating anybody's anybody else's opinion about what you're doing. It just makes complete sense, actually. And you, and you would actually feel like you're allowed to take those actions, and when they attack you, you wouldn't even feel that you're getting attacked. So in that moment, because you're not feeling you're not getting attacked, even though they're attacking you, you don't feel it, because cause what does it feel like to be attacked? Doesn't it feel like your worth is being pulled down? And you don't feel that anymore, because your worth is not unable to be pulled down. No matter what happens, your worth is unable to be pulled down. They can shame you, belittle you, attack you, violently harm you, and you still don't feel that your worth is any different than it was before. That, that, that would be a place of freedom, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, that, and that's the place, you see, it's the linkage between our worth and these events that cause us to then... Seek for the worth to be satisfied by, by compromise. So, so we finish up compromising truth and love and we use our will to do it because, because we have this injury which needs to be released, which is a linkage between how we feel about ourselves and what's happening to us. So this wouldn't even happen if you don't even take the action really, would it? Like You wouldn't even know... That stuff. Sorry, if you don't take the action, you won't even know that that stuff's there. Will you? That's right. That's right. The, the beauty of what you're doing in taking the action is that these fears start coming up, and you start seeing the relationship between your worth and other people's opinion of you, mm -hmm. and then you realise, wow, this is an this is an issue of love of self. I need to be able to love myself no matter what anybody else thinks of me, mm -hmm. and that means no matter anybody else thinks of me on the whole planet. I need to be able to love myself, right? Now, now you can see that when you take the action that causes a attack-based response, in, in some ways it's helpful to you because you start seeing that, oh, I'm responding to this attack. I'm resp oh, I feel bad about this attack, so I'm responding to it. 
Yeah, I knew there was some correlation between the attack and God's truth in there. So yeah. Just so I'm the fact that I'm responding to this attack means that I actually feel my worth is associated with being attacked. I feel like internally they have a valid reason for attacking me somehow. Mm. Right? Now, if, if, if you didn't feel that, if you didn't feel like somebody had a valid reason for attacking you inside of yourself, then, then when somebody did, you wouldn't even feel the attack. It'd just be, oh, that's a very unloving person pity you could even have compassion for them in that place eh? you say oh it's pretty sad that that they feel that way but that's where they're at that's, they don't want to change that obviously yeah very, it's very powerful to to break down the linkage we have between our worth and many things our worth needs to stand on its own and this is a beauty of, of God's love, is that when God loves you, you can feel loved no matter what happens to you externally. right? So therefore your worth now no longer is associated with what happens to you externally. Uh, and that's a very, very liberating place to be. It requires a lot of emotional work to get there, of course, because we have so many childhood associations through family of origin mostly, but also through our school years and so forth, that join up things like making mistakes with worth, you know, being wrong with worth, being right with worth, the things that we talked about in the truth section. And in this section, you know, being attacked and worth. And to us, they're joined together. If we're being attacked, it means we're worthless. And in the opinion of those other people, that certainly might be true, but if we work through it emotionally it won't be true for us so one of the things i'm constantly reminding mary for example in our day-to-day -day life is saying to her just because somebody's attacking you darling it doesn't mean they're right in fact what does it mean they're, wrong, eh? they're unloving and untruthful and what did we say here <laughs> that's when you're wrong doesn't matter what they say, is whether it's right or wrong, in terms of their intellectual argument, the fact that they're attacking you, which is an unloving action, proves they're wrong. And, and if you have disassociated your worth from other people's opinion, you won't even notice it. Mm. Powerful stuff, eh? Great, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and um, many, many of you feel this as well. I can only be happy if I break God's laws. And do what others want. Now, many of, for many of you, that is a belief right within you. You can only be happy if you break God's laws and do what others want. But for most of you, you miss out this bit. Yeah. The bit in brackets. So in other words, you say to yourself, I'll only be happy if I do what others want. You don't realise that what others want, you remember we talked about source of love, we talked about the origins of the, you know, what's happening on the earth and everything, and at the end of the day, you do what other people want on earth, it's highly likely that you will be doing the wrong thing. <laughs> highly likely. Like, it's almost guaranteed, isn't it? Because, because what most people want on earth is exactly the opposite of what God wants. So, so it's highly likely if you do what other people want that you will not be doing what God wants. <laughs> highly likely. And until the general condition of the earth changes, that's going to be a fact. Until we get to the point where everybody on earth allows each other to do what God wants, and after that, then that won't be true anymore. But for the moment, that's how it is. Yep, Josh, thanks.
is um, working for money, is that just a fear-based addiction? You're getting way off track. Okay. I suppose it is an action. <laughs> What's the fear that you have? That you won't get money if you... I'm doing what they want and they're of the world. So. Well, my opinion is if you accept money from a person, you should do what they want. Well, that's what I felt ethically. <laughs> yes, but why are you accepting money from a person when you don't really want to do what they want? Well, it's like I, I want to do a fair portion of what they want, but not all of it. But I'm still doing all of it. Right, but at the end of the day, you're, you're ethically obliged to do all of it if you accept something from them. That's right, that's why I do it. Well, that's what I... Yeah, but you, know, you still haven't answered my question. What's the... Sorry? Why are you choosing to do something that you, that you have things that you don't want in amongst it? I just believe that that... that I, I'm imbibed in the belief that that's all I can get um, as a way of life, I guess. No, it's because you're afraid. What are you afraid of, Josh? Um, I'm afraid that if I do my passion... I won't be supported, I won't have Correct. a place to live. Or That's right, that's your fear. Right, so what you do to justify living in that fear is go and get a job of, of which you then make a barter system which is, and it's ethically right to do whatever the person who's paying you wants you to do. So you'd prefer to do that even though you feel like you're sacrificing yourself, you'd prefer to do that than deal with your fear about the money situation and work through the issues as to why you're not producing enough doing what you want to do. Right? It's a faith thing, I guess, because I'm... There's a number of issues with it. Faith issue, there's an issue with regard to your personal emotions. You don't want to feel certain emotions relating to money. And the majority of people here don't want to feel emotions relating to money. Uh, that's why there's so many emotions on the planet relating to money. It's also the attack thing. Oh. It's also the attack thing. If you do what you want, you won't be supported. You instead be harmed. There's all sorts of things. My experience has been that I've been attacked, but I hadn't worked through it. And it yep. sort of just got so bad that I just folded after a while. Yep. Because Which I didn't understand what I was... I, I didn't work through what I was being... What the true emotion was, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, like you can see that we, take, we do a lot of things, we either do a lot of things that are out of harmony with love of self or others because we're afraid, or we don't do a lot of things that are in harmony with love and self or others because we're afraid. <coughs> and that applies in your situation with this particular issue. You're doing both. You're doing one thing out of harmony with love of self because you're afraid, and then you're not doing a number of things that would be in harmony with love and self because you're afraid. And, and so what ends up, ends up being is we live a constricted life where we do a whole heap of things we don't really want to do, believing that it's the only way to survive. Right? And the majority of you feel that way. Uh, like I, honestly, I've said this to you many times. I can think of thousands of jobs that I could do where I would earn an income and all of them be in harmony with God's truth. And God's love. I, I couldn't think of one when I was looking for I know. jobs. This is what surprises me. But the reason why you can't think of one is because? Fear. Well, well, where is the world's concept? Where is God's concept? In great disharmony. <laughs> oh, disharmony. You're thinking the world's concept. So what's the world's concept? Barter. What's the world's concept of work? Barter. Well, it is, but, but let's be more specific. It's really, the world's concept is, you've got to do a lot of things that you don't really want to do, so that at the end of the day, you can finish up doing some things you do want to do. Isn't that the world's concept? Isn't that the way the world is now, too, as a result? Yep, of course. Now, now while you have that concept, which you do have, inside of you as an emotion, you're going to believe it. So you believe anything I'm saying to you about following your desire and passion is going to be, turn out to be wrong because that's not the way of the world. So I've heard, I've heard you say it to me. Yeah, but you're being impractical. You know, it's not practical to believe that. <laughs> like, I've been living that way for the last eight years. I guess I tried to. But <laughs> <laughs> and you're telling me it's not practical. 
And I, that's how I live. So, like, it seems pretty practical to me. I can only try it again and hopefully... Well, no, you need to process through the emotional fears, Josh. See, you can try the action again, but if you don't process through the emotion, there will be no difference. You need to be prepared to go through the emotions involved. That's the thing that the majority of us don't do. I found that when I started attracting the work, like I, I was just about to get into the fears again and then before i knew it the work world took me away from myself yeah yeah and um i was exhausted at the end of the day and i yeah. was like oh, i've still got these fears i gotta go yeah but i didn't that's I didn't what happens manage to, to yeah. do it. the world is geared to pull you back to its place isn't that not true it is geared that way you know, there's so much pressure on you to go back to the status quo. Right? That's why the majority of you go back to the status quo, because there's a lot of pressure on you to go back to the status quo. But a person who truly has a will <coughs> for love and change, they don't go back to the status quo. They work through these four main areas and make changes. Never go back. Okay. All right, well, let's, let's just talk for a moment about action itself. We've talked about our primary, our primary motivations for action. What, what are our primary motivations for action, really, if we get down to it? Huh? What's our primary motivations for action? What was our primary motivations to avoid truth? What was our primary motivations to avoid faith? Yeah. Avoid pain. Nah, to avoid pain. Our primary motivation for action is to avoid pain. Our primary motivation to not act is in an attempt to avoid personal pain. That's why we do it. It's the same problem. Same problem as the other problems. Now, when we say avoid personal pain, the difference with some actions, though, is that they make us feel a bit happier, right? So we're talking about unloving actions like addictions that make us feel happier. Why do we do that? Because we're aiming for what we think is pleasure. So now we start seeing this concept in our actions, you follow? We start seeing a concept which is relating to the relationship we have between two primary urges, if you like. The urge to avoid pain and the urge to receive pleasure. But the problem is that it's our definition, therefore not God's, our definition of pain and pleasure. Now, our definition of pain and pleasure is so, so stuffed up, right, that a lot of the things that we think are pleasurable end up in extreme amounts of pain. And a lot of the things that we think are painful, if we actually dealt with them, would end up in extreme amounts of pleasure for us. That's how stuffed up we are. So, so what we're doing is we're accepting whose definition? Well, the world's, isn't it? You know, you're in the world and, and somebody taught you. We're accepting the world's definition of what is painful and what is pleasurable, are we not? And God's screaming at us going, not really screaming, of course. God's saying, no, you silly person. <laughs> this is not the way <laughs> I created it to be. And we're going, no, <laughs> this is the way it is. Don't tell me any different. This is the way it is. So what we're doing is we're going, okay, what causes pleasure? What causes pleasure is doing what other people want. What causes pleasure is getting the agreement and acceptance and, and honour of other people. What causes pleasure is to not be attacked, not be disapproved of, not be hurt, not be whatever. That's what causes pleasure. And so in our definition, what, how do we act? We just do all of that because that's going to give us pleasure in our own minds and in our own feelings. That's what we believe. Is it true? 
No, of course it's not true. We, we, we were daily living examples of it being not true, right? And then we die with it being not true. So, so of course it's not true, but we wish to accept it. Because if you do it differently, all of those things you're afraid of that the action will trigger, like the attack, the abuse, the, you know, the disapproval and all these other things you're afraid of will all start happening. Right? So you decide, you can't do that. Pleasure only comes from the world's accepting the world's definition. That's what you believe. But you know what you do? You forget one big thing. The world is still living in amongst God's laws. All of God's laws are still operating on the world. That's why the world is in so much pain and suffering. Right? Because all of God's laws are operating perfectly upon the world. And if we agree with the world's definition of pleasure, we're going to end up where the world is now with regard to pain. And if we agree with the world's definition of pain, we're going to finish up with avoiding that or attempting to avoid that pain, which is going to result in more pain. Right? And what's the net result? Net result is pain and suffering. Not just pain, but long term pain. Long term pain, suffering. You know, where we suffer. Pain is a good feedback mechanism, really, in a lot of ways, isn't it? Because pain tells us, oh, something's wrong. So it's a good thing to be in pain. We know, like at the moment, my back is very sore. So I know, okay, worth issues here. I've got to, you know, I've got to address this particular issue, whatever this issue is. I've got to find it, right? It motivates, right? But if, if, I can't, if I can't walk for years because of my back pain, now I've avoided the pain and it's turned into suffering, right? And, and this is what we've got to do. We've got to start seeing our suffering, start seeing our pain as being caused by our avoidance of the God's definition and the acceptance of the world's definition. Right. So, Barbara. Um, our celestial friends um, in their message to us before we came pointed it out very clearly to us that that pain and suffering is just not earthbound. They can be bound into it for hundreds and thousands of years. That's right, yeah. And the majority are actually. The majority it doesn't cease here, unfortunately. We, we still retain the same emotional feelings about and the same definition, which is driven by the emotional feelings, for many years after we've passed even. And, and let's face it, most people get so solid in their avoidance of truth by the time they're 30 or 40 that they next, the next 30 or 40 years, is they're pretty resistive. And that's why a lot of, you know, there's a lot of grumpy old men and grumpy old women around the place because, because they're so firmly established in their, in their avoidance of the, the truth. That, and so they pass in that grumpy state, of course. And then, of course, they've got to work through it then. We can avoid all of that. But, you see, we also, we also have a very short-term view of pain and pleasure. Do you know what I mean by that? Right? We say, we'll talk more about this on, in a couple of days' time. But the reason why I'm raising it now is that, is that we have a very short-term view of pain in the sense that we say to ourselves, if I'm in pain, it's bad. Simple. Now, God's going, well, no, if the pain is actually the cause by the error that's within you and you're feeling it, if you're in pain, it's actually good, because right? you're releasing it. Right? But you're saying that's bad. And then you, you say, if I'm receiving pleasure, it's great. Right? And God's saying, no, but if your pleasure is out of harmony with love and truth, it's actually a long-term pain and suffering going to be associated with that. Right? But we don't see that. Right? And we're not, we're not busily measuring the world's pain and suffering, unfortunately, either, are we? In fact, most of the time we're ignoring it. That's how we can ignore 100 million children dying every year. Right? That's how we ignore it, by ignoring pain and suffering. 
And, and so we're not great, we're not even great with measuring it. So, so this is a big problem. Now, how we perceive pain and pleasure is going to a great degree determine the action we take. Is it not? So, so most of the time you will be guaranteed, if you think something is going to end up pleasurable, highly likely you'll do it. If you think something is going to end up painful, you're highly unlikely you'll do it. Right? That's, that's the reality. And so this is why our definition of pain and pleasure must change in order to address some fear of action. We've got to start seeing that actually we take, we take action in harmony with love and truth. There is always going to be less suffering, less pain and more pleasure. We've got to see this relationship. And we've got to see that if I take an action out of harmony with love and truth, then there's always going to be more pain, more suffering, no matter what I think, there's going to be more pain and more suffering, whether it's for me or for others or for both, both of us. Right? And I've got to see this relationship. So, so one of the reasons why we're afraid of taking action is because we do not wish to change the way in which we view pain and pleasure. We don't. And, and we want to fool ourselves that if we take action in harmony with love and truth, it's actually going to be more pain. Now, I, I hear you saying that to yourselves all the time, that if you take more action in harmony with love and truth, that you're going to end up in more pain. People will attack you more and so forth and so forth. It's not true. And you will also tell yourself that if I do more things in harmony with what the world wants, you know, then I'll get more pleasure out of it. And that's not true either. Have a look at the world. It doesn't look very happy to me. Have a look at, like, I don't know if I can, I, that I've actually ever seen in my whole life a happy relationship. <laughs> you know, an honestly happy relationship that's based upon truth openness, love, where both people are not lying to each other or telling each other fibs, where both people are actually connected with each other. I've never seen it on earth yet. So, so you can't tell me the world's not in pain, right? Yeah. Why? Why? It's got to be a reason. It's because we're acting out of harmony with love and truth. Right? And yet we're afraid of taking action in harmony with love and truth. Right? So it's something we've got to address, isn't it? Now, why, do we, why are we afraid of doing it? Because action will trigger emotion, which to us is pain and not pleasure. So therefore, what do we do? We decide, no, I want to feel pleasure rather than pain. So what I'm going to do is not take any action that is in harmony with love and truth and instead take action that is out of harmony with love and truth. I am going to act in harmony with the world. So that's what we do. We act in harmony with the world, hoping for a different result than the world's getting. Not working too well. Uh, well, guys, it's at, sorry, Eva, it's at the end of our day. So, <coughs> so what we're going to do tomorrow is uh, discuss the issue of emotion. Remember, we haven't covered that issue of emotion yet. And then we'll have a Q&A about this section, which is about your fear of action and also fear of emotion. Does that sound all right? Yeah. So that's our, that's our course th tomorrow. So hopefully you've uh, enjoyed today. Hopefully it's been a bit enlightening to you as to what's going on. Can you see some of the things are a lot more simple than what you've been making them? And, uh, and also, can you see the importance of using our will differently? Yep. Because obviously it's our will that determines what we do with these things, isn't it? We need to use our will differently. And this is, about, this is why we need to learn about developing our will first. So hopefully we've already gone through now the resistance to love and change in three areas. And tomorrow we'll cover the fourth. And then we have an opportunity to have feedback about it. Now up the back, 
there's uh, the notebook, uh, I think, the, uh, uh, that's still there for any who would like to have some feedback on the issues we've discussed today or on the issue of fear of emotion. So put specifically what the issues are there and I'll make some choices tonight about who will get some feedback tomorrow. We'll probably try to do two people again. And then I'll give you some group feedback about, about the issues tomorrow as well and we'll do a bit of a summary of the two days. So that's our plan tomorrow. All right. So thanks for your time today, guys. See you tomorrow. <laughs>